To answer our initial question, does it matter who government imposes the statutory incidence of a tax on, we will need to conduct some basic economic analysis. While you will not be expected to conduct this sort of analysis in a testing situation, graphical analysis of this sort can help to illustrate the important concepts you will be expected to know. It is generally easiest to illustrate these concepts using an excise tax. Recall that an excise tax is essentially a sales tax imposed on a specific good. Let's begin by briefly discussing the basic elements of a market for a hypothetical good. Economists define a market for a good as a voluntary arrangement of exchange in which demanders want to consume a good and suppliers meet that demand by supplying the good to market. Thus, there are two sides to the market for a good, the demand side and the supply side. Economists graphically depict the relationship between the price of a good along the vertical axis and the quantity demanded and quantity supplied of a good along the horizontal axis. On the demand side of the market, consumers behave according to the law of demand, which holds that at higher prices, consumers demand lesser quantities of the good, and at lower prices, they demand greater quantities. Economists illustrate this relationship between the price of a good and the quantity demanded of the good with a curve that slopes downward and to the right. On the supply side of the market, suppliers behave according to the law of supply, which holds that at higher prices, suppliers supply greater quantities of the good to market, and at lower prices, they supply lesser quantities. Economists illustrate the relationship between the price of a good and the quantity supplied to market with a curve that slopes upward and to the right. Not only have the law of demand and the law of supply been consistently supported in real-world markets, they make a lot of intuitive sense. Common sense tells us that consumers consume more at lower prices and less at higher prices, and that suppliers, in their desire to maximize profits, supply more to markets when prices rise. The point at which the demand curve and the supply curve intersects indicates the equilibrium level of output in this market. The equilibrium level of output is the point at which quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. It is the efficient level of output in the sense that society's resources are neither under allocated nor over allocated to the production and consumption of this good. That is to say, there is neither a surplus nor a shortage of this good in the market. Let us assume, for the sake of illustration, that the equilibrium quantity in this hypothetical market is 6. There is only one price point that satisfies the equilibrium condition. We find that price by tracing the point at which the curves intersect back to the vertical axis. This gives us the equilibrium price. It is set by the interaction of supply and demand at the point where quantity supplied equals quantity demanded. Let's assume that this price, this equilibrium price, is $8. It is important to note here that in a market in which competitive conditions hold, that no single supplier or no single buyer and no government decision maker sets the price for the good. The market is said to be self-governing. The total amount of sales revenue generated in this market can be determined by simply multiplying the equilibrium quantity 6 by the equilibrium price 8, yielding $48. Now that we have explained the basic economic concepts underlying the analysis of a competitive market, we can proceed to determine the effects of an excise tax on the market.